Hey, if you end up liking this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, it's actually incredibly helpful for me, given YouTube's odd algorithm. Thank you. The beginning of Yu Yu Hakusho begins with the death of our main character, Yurameshi Yusuke. If this was 1992, I would have said that this is an incredibly unique and interesting premise. However, 30 years later, this also happens like every week at this point in some random anime. Although, in this particular case, he isn't transported to another world or being transformed, he's stuck in the normal plane of existence, watching people overlooking his body. Yusuke, like anybody else, has a slight panic attack. He tries to touch, well, punch people, only to pass immediately through them. But hey, at least the child he ended up saving appears to be fine. As Yusuke struggles with his invisible form, he begins to think back to the events of the day that led into this odd situation. Yusuke starts his day at school after skipping the past 10 days for arguably understandable reasons. If you thought everyone hated Chris, wait till you hear of Yusuke's social reputation. It's not all bad though, his close childhood friend Keiko is there to support him and lecture him. She tries to get him to go to the guidance office since he's being called to it, but Yusuke doesn't particularly care for that. And after some 90s Japan childhood friend hijinks, Yusuke escapes. Keiko, while rightly frustrated, walks into two of her other friends who give us a look into how students perceive Yusuke, a perception Keiko clearly doesn't share. Our protagonist walks around, finds some fellow class skippers, aggressively gets onto them for stealing a wallet using his reputation, and gets caught by number one Yusuke hater, Iwamoto Sensei, who loves getting Yusuke into trouble. And afterwards, Yusuke tries to just leave school. He almost succeeds before getting found by Yusuke's supporter, Takanaka Sensei. The Sensei attempts to bring Yusuke to his office for some tea and supporting guidance. But Yusuke escapes, telling his ride or die supporter to get out of his business. Yusuke's day so far has been full of people giving him shit. And now he goes home and gets another lecture, this time from his mom. After leaving out of frustration again, Yusuke walks and spooks the town before running into a wild battle with three grunts and their leader, Kurobara. He views Yusuke as his rival to be defeated. The feeling is not mutual. 156 losses to his name, but the challenger still doesn't give up at least willingly. Finally, Yusuke meets the boy who would mark his death. The child plays with a football near dangerous forms of transportation, and Yusuke himself attempts to give a lecture on the danger of that activity. Despite his aggressive and then comedic approach, it wasn't very effective. The boy eventually kicks the ball into the street and proceeds to go after it, while at the same time a car comes racing down the street not aware of anything in his path. Yusuke then impulsively acts to save the child, but gets hit in the process. After Yusuke's memory trip, he's now made a crystal clear revelation about his death, 
However, he's still confused about his existence in a ghostly form. It is then we are introduced to a guide to the other world who answers with going by the name Botan. Botan's a bit surprised by Yusuke's lack of surprise and clear aggressive language, but checks his gradebook to see that it checks out. After some Botan shenanigans, Yusuke asks about the kid he saved in a nonchalant type of way. Botan takes Yusuke over to see him and it seems that the boy got a little scratch but is otherwise fine aside from that. His mother is incredibly thankful nothing terrible happened to her boy. After that confirmation, Yusuke tells Botan that he has no regrets and is ready to go. But Botan replies that she's not here to take Yusuke to the other world, but actually wanted to ask if Yusuke is willing to undertake a trial to return to life. Botan then reveals that the boy was meant to get hit by the car and miraculously survive without a scratch, meaning Yusuke's death was pretty much worthless. At least there's that trial to return to life, right? But in the end, Yusuke says that he's fine. He confidently thinks that nothing good would come from him coming back to life. Everyone must be relieved that he's dead and his mom would have an easier time now. It's really sad and it's also a thought process I think is quite common for those depressed and willing to commit suicide. There's usually this idea that no one cares about them and it's better off that they're dead. And considering the day and likely life that Yusuke's had, where everyone seems to get on his case, it's pretty clear in how he developed this conclusion. Botan luckily tells him not to rush his decision, giving him time to actually think and to go check out his wake. When Yusuke appears at his wake, he sees some of his fellow students from school appear cheerful despite his death, and it starts to confirm his thoughts from before. Yusuke. But then... Yusuke! Yusuke! まずいっすよ、帰りましょうよ。え、うるせえ。話せ、この野郎は。話してんだ。いや、いや、いや。カバラさん、ちゃんと席っすよ。おい、恨めしい。よくし。てめえを殺すな、この俺だ。聞いて
びっくりしたぞユウスケお前が子供を助けたって聞いた時はお前がなしかしなぜかなちっとも褒める気がしないのはユウスケ死んだら元も子もないぞTo it at the time. After those events, Botan returns, asking if Yusuke has made his decision. And he has. He will undergo the trial and thus begin the first arc of the story, w a s a journey to the other world to allow Yusuke to eventually come back to life. So now that you, the viewer, have all the context surrounding this story, we can really get into the nitty gritty of this episode's execution. The immediate drop into Yusuke's death is always one of the most interesting parts of the episode, and you get right into what's happening. It also does a great job at characterizing Yusuke as this impulsive and arguably aggressive individual. I mean, the guy's first instinct was to punch someone, for Pete's sake. Granted, the officer was touching his body without consent, and as a blue hedgehog once said, That's no good. The air of mystery behind what happened also really helps draw you in and keeps you engaged with the situation. Then we move back into the past. Yusuke gets further characterization, and we get to see what his life is like. Considering we already know that he ends up dying, I think that leads the viewer to having this immediate empathetic view of Yusuke. So, all the more negative things that happen to him and all the pushback he receives is that much more impactful. Pretty much every relationship Yusuke has is really well defined with the time they are given. Keiko and Takanaka sensei tend to be shown in a much more positive light, and I think their positions on Yusuke's actions and attitude. Or legitimately understandable. The mom and Iwamoto, especially, are definitely shown in a more negative light. I would not categorize Yusuke's mom as abusive or anything like that, but it seems she has a lot of shit going for herself and can't really focus or give adequate attention to Yusuke and his own struggles. It's more of a miscommunication between them, and I think it makes her outburst so much more painful to watch. As she shows off her true colors there, rather than the more careless and abrasive person she was when she woke up that morning. Iwamoto is just a dick, though. Iwamoto!
Then you have Kuwabara, the guy who absolutely comes off pretty positively all things considered when he gets completely destroyed during their little fight earlier. Alongside his legitimate respect for Yusuke where he keeps trying over and over to come out on top. I think what makes Kuwabara's reaction to Yusuke's death also so impactful other than the music, the incredible acting, and just how long it is where Kuwabara tries to extend his time with Yusuke as much as he can is that he legitimately tears up. In 1992 and even in 2022, the culture surrounding men crying still isn't really healthy so seeing this strong-willed guy cry out for someone really stands out. Granted, the death of a friend is one of the times where it's socially acceptable to cry, so maybe it's not that big a deal, but regardless, I, it really hits home against Yusuke's original perception about his death, when he thought that no one was going to care, yet all these people do care. Even the ones you never really thought would have had these types of reactions. Bringing back the boy and his mom from the initial car hit to pay their respects was also incredibly well executed. The dichotomy between their reactions to Yusuke's death really hits hard where the mother, the adult, completely understands what has happened and is in clear distress over the young man who saved her child and then you have the young boy who doesn't really understand what's happening, but is excited about seeing Yusuke again and looks forward to spending time with him in the future. It's really sad and I think it can really hit you in just the right way that not only keeps Yusuke's story and his eventual effort to come back to life so engaging, but makes the situation so much sadder than before. The wide variety of reactions based on how close they are to Yusuke is great and really helps ground and flesh out the story. The introduction of Botan really helps keep the episode lighter in an overall tone. I mean the show isn't M-rated or anything like that. Playing everything completely dark and straight would be a bit much. Plus having the more lighthearted tone I would argue allows for the darker and more serious moments to really stand out in comparison. But the chemistry between Yusuke and Botan is great, and the idea that Yusuke's death was completely worthless not only works as a way to make the situation more depressing, but is legitimately pretty funny. All that work to save the kid, but he actually would have been better off without it? In the end, not only does this episode really stand out on its own as this exploration of death and how people end up reacting to it despite our potential thought processes within our minds, but works incredibly well as a beginning to a bigger story. Getting people to care about Yusuke and the rest of his journey pretty much off the bat. To end all this off, I just want to say to those who know people who are struggling with depression and suicidal thoughts or intentions, I would strongly advise you definitely tell them directly how much you care about them. Many people, Yusuke included, don't really get that affirmation of value regarding their existence. Thus, they end up pretty mentally insecure in getting at least a little validation from someone can really make a difference with mental health. After that, maybe try watching this episode. I think that there might be some legitimate value in that and you can either recommend it to them or better yet, watch it together. There's also plenty of other resources out there as well, like the suicide hotline to help in these types of situations. But as great as it would potentially be, no one on earth gets the same chance Yusuke had to see directly the effects of his death on people and then be given a chance to return to life. So dealing with these struggles in the present is incredibly important. And with, with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, good luck out there, and well, don't die.